Hey guys! Welcome back to the Tea in Theater. And this is our drama for the week. Dum dum dum! Memorizing your lines. I'm Jenny. I'm Caitlin. And we're your hosts for the week. Yeah. Okay, for the so week. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have different people come in and talk about different aspects of theater. Me and Caitlin are going to be the main people talking on this, but we're going to have some alumni come and just other members of tech and um, advanced theater, hopefully beginning theater too. Yeah, and there are gonna be some episodes where the two of us won't be here together. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Just a like little um, sneak peek or of a future podcast. <laughs> future podcast. <laughs> we're not revealing anything, but we're revealing yeah, this, everything. This is a mini reveal, but I might be doing a choreography episode. I might be doing an episode where I talk for the, all of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Very specific. I'm looking forward to listening to you talk the whole time. Let No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Okay, yeah. even though that our topic for, or the tea for the week is going to be memorizing your lines, we're really mostly going to be talking about the rehearsal process here in Wrangler Theater and maybe somewhere else. The rehearsal process for really any theater is, well, it starts with the audition. So you audition, the part is cast, you got the part. Congratulations, you did amazing because you listened to our last podcast. Woo! So, now it's time you get the script. As soon as you get the script, read it. Don't just use spark notes cuz I know some of you out there will do that. Booty. <laughs> but don't use spark notes. Read the actual script and go through and highlight your lines. If you want to like make it fun, what I do is like make my script look pretty. I'll use different color highlighters for different characters I'm maybe playing if I'm double casted. When you highlight your lines do you highlight the whole line or do you just highlight the character's name oh i highlight the whole line after i learned my lesson and i used to just highlight the entire thing to make it look like i was talking more because that just made me feel good <laughs> but after 12 angry jurors where there was um a big monologue uh, that big 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 monologue <laughs> i highlighted through the entire thing and there were parts with parentheses like telling me where to walk or just like how to say something and I would struggle reading it because I'd be like, where does this parentheses part end? <laughs> so now I just highlight where I'm talking. Yeah, for me, I don't even, I don't highlight the line at all. I, when, you know how it says on a script that the character mm -hmm. and the line follows, I literally just highlight the character name. Well, it's your personal preference on how you want to highlight it. I personally like using a ruler just so it looks pretty. A ruler? Yeah, I use a ruler and I use it to make straight lines with the highlighter. You don't do that? No! <laughs> oh, well, that just came from me bullet journaling, I guess. <laughs> I know here in Wrangler Theater, they do have a read-through mm -hmm. of, the, yeah, of most, the entire play. Most shows will. I, every show I've been in has a read-through mm. with it. This time for Medea, we did it before the auditions, which was interesting. But most theaters, after your cast, you will go and read through for your part. And that's a fun day because you get to see everybody as their character for the first time. Some people are like, it's so boring, but... It's actually really fun because yeah. you also get to see like what the show's going to be like in the next few months or weeks or in some cases, days. Yeah, I like using those days to experiment with how I'm saying something. So if I say something and then I'm in the feeling of you shouldn't do that immediately follows i'm like i shouldn't do that i mark it on <laughs> hey guys pro tip so before you read through make sure you go through and read your lines at least once so you're just familiar with what you're saying so you're not like just stumbling and um stuttering on different words or mm -hmm. anything so you also sound better yeah especially if it's like a Shakespearean play and oh so after you get your script and you highlight and you read through your lines first and we have our read through, we are going to start blocking most likely. Mm -hmm. So the blocking is when you go through the script and the director tells you where to stand or changes how you say a line if they don't like it already, which they most likely will because you're amazing. But <laughs> <laughs> wow. <You never> know. <laughs> <laughs> but the director will um, tell you where to go, um, start blocking. Maybe we should tell them upstage, downstage, and stage terms and such. Yes, stage terms. Okay, so upstage is towards the back of the stage. Downstage is the front of the stage. Stage right is to your right when you're facing the audience. And stage left is to your left when you're facing the audience. It is called upstage and downstage because the stage used to be tilted. 
towards the audience. Ooh, we fallen. We leaning. <laughs> yeah, that was my stage choir final exam. What? Yeah. We're in stage choir? We're show choir. When? In eighth grade. <laughs> One thing that I always remember about stage direction is that it is always dependent on the actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's best to learn your stage before you do the show. Yeah. So you know where you're going. If it's just like a normal stage where there's a stage and then the audience in front of you, it's mm-hmm. most likely normal stage direction terms. But where I was trained, actually, it was theater in the round. <gasps> so we had... Um, corners in the theater where we would enter and those would be like the name like it would be like a clock so there was um one o'clock five o'clock seven o'clock and eleven o'clock where we would walk to and be like hey walk towards this corner and we just had to know that we were drilled on it but <laughs> Bro. we eventually learned our way around what that exists uh-huh I didn't yeah know once that. on this island um a broadway show that closed unfortunately in january but will be touring with smith center Ooh. is coming so is it going to have like a... I have no clue. I, I'm i curious to see how they're going to do it. It is very important to, if you don't know what you're doing, ask. Yes, ask questions <laughs> that directors always like it when you want clarification on things and you don't just assume every little thing. They want you to, they want to know that you know what you're doing and they'll feel more clarity knowing that you know what you're doing if you ask questions. Yeah, and then you guys will be on the same page so there's no confusion with anything. So here in regular theater, we have specific days where we're going over specific scenes, and if you have a line or anything in that scene, you should memorize your lines before they start blocking that scene. Yeah, it's always smart to memorize. It depends on different theater's rules. I've had theaters where you have to memorize the entire play before you even start blocking. Um, there was a theater, this one was one of my favorites, but we, after we blocked the scene, if we ran it again, it had to be memorized. Um, for Wrangler Theater, we have to memorize our lines for the scenes before we block them. We're allowed to have our scripts with us so we can write down blocking. Oh, that's another tip, write down your blocking so you don't forget. Yes, it is incredibly important. Don't depend on somebody else like an understudy or the assistant the assistant director to write it down for you unless you are physically not there for the rehearsal then depend on them yes <laughs> if you're not there <laughs> then that you should you oh, should yeah, do always that. tell your director when you're going to be gone you usually write your outdates on a form but your director's not going to go and memorize those most likely mm-hmm. um you have to go and talk to your director before you're gone so that yeah. you can arrange like a time for you to learn your blocking or a work around the scheduling of the directing I guess. Yeah and it, if you do have someone that's understudying you please tell them like when you know that you're gonna be gone that they will be going on most likely. But if you're ever an understudy just be prepared to go on anytime. Mm-hmm. Don't procrastinate on learning lines and don't just like be the person who sits there playing on their phone during rehearsal. Don't go on your phone ever during rehearsal. It's just bad <laughs> etiquette. <laughs> yes, it is bad etiquette. Back to the process <laughs> of um, rehearsing. After we have ca- been cast, memorize our lines before and highlight our lines and read them before the read-through, go into the read-through and block the show. We'll normally have a dress rehearsal. A dress rehearsal is when you just do the whole play in your costume. It's no different from any other rehearsal. There is no tech. There is no audience, most likely. Mm-hmm. Um, you may have some pictures being taken of you. But that's only the really different thing. The Mm -hmm. next thing you'll go into is tech rehearsal. These rehearsals are for tech, not for the actors. So the tech will practice running through the show with you guys there. Mm -hmm. And those ones are so much fun because then you see the show really, really, really come to life. And it's amazing. And then after tech rehearsals, the show goes on. Yeah. And an important thing that is really obvious for some people, but, you know, you got to point it out because you're a human being sometimes you just forget don't forget your costume don't (laughs) oh my god i can't tell you like how many times i forget it for dress rehearsal days yeah (laughs) (laughs) freshman year i think i forgot it for at least one dress rehearsal for every show Mm -hmm. it was not good yeah and also if you have any questions about what costume is appropriate if it's not being being given to you by the costume department or anything ask yes um i'm pretty sure Avi and Brielle are in charge of costuming this year. Mm-hmm. So if you ever have any questions, go to them. They will happily answer any questions. You can DM them on Instagram or just text them or anything. 
They are so sweet, and they will help you out. Literally any question that you have, ask. Yeah, you can even ask any of us. Like, yes. you can text me or Caitlin. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions on, like, acting or really anything, you can just comment them below, actually. Com yeah, comment down below. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be happy to answer. And don't and forget whatnot. to subscribe to our channel, too. So now that you know the rehearsal process here in Wrangler Theater and maybe in every theater around you, it is crucial to memorize your lines. Yes, don't forget it. This is like literally the most important part of the show. Well, that's debatable. One of the most important parts of the show. <laughs> <laughs> so as Jenny mentioned earlier in this podcast, it is very important to read the script as soon as you get it and make sure that you're read when you're reading it, you're not distracted by anything around you. Yes. Or maybe you can even read the script with somebody else who's in the show or read the script with someone who isn't or who's like, who could help you there for the whole entire time. Yeah, that's so, always fun. Yeah, it's always fun. Yeah. If you just don't want to read it by yourself, you can have like a two-person interaction thing. It's a two-person play and <laughs> each person is playing like 75 characters. Imagine doing Layer Movie Project and just oh, reading no. it through with two people. Oh my god, I can't even imagine that. <laughs> like, I struggle with my own part. Like. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> also, something that Jenny said earlier is that marking up your script. Yes. If you don't know how to pronounce a name, because there are really tough names in Medea, and mm. na like, yeah, names in general, yes. just write like a pronunciation of that word above mm. it. It helps me out a lot. It helped me out in Larry Project last year, because yes. there were some weird names in that one too. <laughs> Not as tough as Medea. <laughs> yeah. If there's a word you don't know, look it up. <laughs> look up the word and write it. Write what it specifically means. Yeah. You may be acting a word in a different way than how it was written. Yeah, just in general for life tip, look up all meanings of words. It helps out in the SAT as well. <laughs> life tips. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is not life advice as well as theater advice because right. theater is life. So the yeah, theater affects your life in such a positive way it really opens your opens you up to reading yeah it can help you a lot with reading and memorization <laughs> and working in a group because you're working with actors and you want to not treat them like they're animals okay i'm about to spill some tea so <laughs> oh no <laughs> this is like an actual team thing yeah, it does have some competition, and yeah, there were some really toxic environments in theater, but at Wrangler Theater, it's not toxic. Yay. And comparing it to some other activities I've done, I've personally competed in dance for a very, very short time, but they're saying, oh, this is a team sport, but even when I was dancing with three other girls, it was always like a slit each other throat competition to see who can get front and center, and it was just not fun being there because we weren't really working together yeah we were competing together but no we were not working together in theater everyone has to work together and everyone has to put their all in for their part to make the show as amazing as it will be theater is just amazing because it's actual teamwork mm -hmm. and we're not throwing shade at dance yeah we like dance. Theater, dance is so much fun <laughs> dance is so much fun like dance and theater they're they challenge you physically, mentally, and emotionally in ways that you didn't think that was possible sometimes. And it's really, even if you're an introvert, it's really nice to have people who are going through the same things as you and that you can depend on and you guys can go through it together. And last year when we did, or not last year, two years ago, when we did Legally Blonde and we had to do the Whipped Into Shape Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> where we had to jump rope and sing at the same time. Yes, we all were like in pain because we were like, "Oh my God!" Yeah, we went through it together. We went through it together, and I remember like coming at the end of each number for like each show when we'd all go backstage. We'd be like, "Oh my gosh, yeah, we, we did it, guys!" Up. It's yeah, great. <laughs> even though you're like physically dying, <laughs> you get that sense of happiness because. You did this not only for yourself, but everyone around you. And that just, I know for me, I'm, I'm, I can't say for you, Jenny, because I'm not you, <laughs> but that just means so much more. Yeah. yeah. So 
when you do mark up your, your script, <laughs> when you do mark up your script, it is very important that you write everything down in pencil. Not pen, because you can't, have, unless you have erasable pens. I have these really, really cool erasable pens that are awesome. Oh but God. something that you can erase with, mm-hmm. because blocking changes all the time. I know when I'm choreographing, I'll teach one thing and be like, hey, yeah, I don't like that anymore. We're changing it up. <laughs> Never mind. And completely change it. So blocking changes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's all we have for yeah. rehearsing. For memorizing, it is very important to practice. We have the same tips as we did last week. Don't wait until last minute. Practice in front of people. Practice, practice in the- front of the mirror. Record yourself and watch. If you guys need a refresher on that, please watch the pr- or please listen to the previous podcasts and get all of your info on that because memorizing your monologue is kind of almost the same as memorizing your line. As this episode is coming to a close, we wanted to give you guys updates on Wrangler Theater. Okay, this week was our first Jester's meeting and it was awesome. Loved it so much. I know I'm coming back every single Thursday for the rest of the school year. But it started on Thursday and it's going to be running from 2.30 until 4 every Thursday Mm -hmm. until who knows when. Yeah, and for you guys who are in DECA or skills, and I'm in, I'm, I'm the skills secretary, so I know this. Flex. Flex, flex. Uh, for anyone who is in a CTSO or any other club that meets on Thursdays, you're good because Gestures doesn't start until 2.30, so you can still attend your CTSO or your after-school club and come to Jester's right after. You can arrive anytime and leave anytime. Yeah, you don't have to stay for the entire thing. Like, if you're feeling shy that day and you're like, hey, I wanna go next week, you feel free to go and come back next week. Make sure to come back. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> um, even if you didn't come to this week's practice, you could still come to next week's. Yeah, and if you want to before, we have drama club meetings starting at two o'clock for the time before so if you want somewhere to hang you can come hang with us and figure out everything about wrangler theater yeah learn about that speaking of wrangler theater the upcoming show is madea and tickets are now on sale on wranglertheater.org they are seven dollars online you can buy them online for seven dollars and at the banker for ten dollars um the shows are thursday october 10th and friday october 11th both nights have um, 6.30 shows, but Friday has a 2.30 matinee, which you should totally come to. Each show has a different Medea who is very, very, very talented. Shout out to them because they're just so amazing. They literally blow me away every single time I watch them. Yes. And yeah, yeah, there's a t-shirt fundraiser online. You can get your shirt at Wrangler Theater for $20. Our goal is to sell 50 shirts, so if you can help us get there, they're selling out fast, so you want to get one of your shirts yes the link for it is also going to be in the subscription below so you can always check that out if you're actually interested and then you should go and since you're on your phone or laptop already you can pull it up i know you can um (laughs) so go you can (laughs) (laughs) so go on to instagram and follow us at wcta drama club Come subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website, Mm wranglertheater.org. All of the information that we're telling you about the updates on Wrangler Theater is on our website. And you can even find our podcast on the website. Yeah. Yeah. So you should check that out. There's a bunch of cool stuff on that, including behind the scenes videos from last year. There's gonna be a new vlog that's gonna be posted by Rachel. Yes, in Rachel. our cast of Medea. No pressure, but so we're so excited to see that. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Make sure you spread the word about this podcast to your friends fellow wranglers yes and tell them to listen in on what's going on in theater Mm -hmm. because we always got the tea and as deco wouldn't say what the heck a joint theater thank you guys for tuning in we'll see you next week Bye. bye